Hallelujah. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Psalms, Psalm 47. Great to see you all. And as the folks ro roll in here, let's... Uh, said to him because a Muslim in general uh, their mindset of Christianity is people bowing down to pieces of wood or to statues and I explained to him that uh, Christianity is not a bowing down to any image of anything in heaven on earth or under the earth but it's a living encounter with a living God amen and God desires to encounter His people. He desires to embrace, encounter, and to relate with His people. And we relate to Him. We have relationship with God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. And His presence is here already. Amen. And here it says in Psalm 47, it says, Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. How awesome is the Lord Most High, the great King above all the earth. He subdued nations under us, people under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy. I said God has ascended amid shouts of joy. The Lord, amid the sounding of trumpets, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing, sing to Him a song of praise. Let's stand together, turn around to two or three people, introduce yourself, say welcome to City Bible Church, to know God and to make Him known. Walk around, introduce yourself, don't be shy. Are you ready to praise Him, church? Come on, right where you are, begin to lift your hands. Come lift on, let's voices. lift our voices. Let's lift Come our on, hands. let's not wait for a song to get us warmed up or to get into His presence. Father, we worship You this morning. God, we give You all the glory. to 
your hands lift your hearts lift your eyes unto the hills where your help comes from this morning let's sing to the king 
He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our honor. He's worthy of all glory. Lift your voice and sing to Him. Sing to the King. Sing to the King. Come on, worship Him. Father, we set our eyes on you this morning. Lord, every distraction fades away in your presence. Lord, we recognize that you are here with us this morning. We give you honor, we give you glory. Lord, we lift you, you up Jesus. this morning, God. Yes, Lord. While we were just lifting our hands up before the Lord, I saw people that had been drinking from little puddles and little ponds. And it kind of sustained them. And yet, there was, there's a river. There's a river that runs and it's the rivers of living water. It's the rivers that's teeming with life. It's the river that wherever it flows, whatever it touches, it shall live. Let's begin to drink. Let's begin to drink like we've never drunk before. Let's begin to drink. And as we drink, let life return to us. Let's move out of the being sustained and just kind of just enough just to live. And let's move to that place of abundance and abundant life. Let's allow as we drink the sadness to be turned into joy, the brokenness to be turned into wholeness, the, the sickness to be turned into healing. And let's allow the confusion to become a sound mind and the turmoil to become just a place of tranquility and peace let's allow the river of God as we drink Jesus said if any man is thirsty let him come to me and drink let's drink let's drink deep uh, because out of the wells of salvation we'll draw waters we'll draw water out of the wells of salvation let's draw water let's drink let's run to the river let's drink of the living water this morning Let's drink of Him. His presence is here. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. 
deeper in go deeper than you've ever gone before holy 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 in his presence holy, holy, holy. look into his beautiful wonderful face holy, holy, look into his eyes holy, let his love fill you, you are holy, holy. the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit this morning worthy, worthy. worship him let the love look from his eyes fill you and saturate you. Accept you. You're accepted. You're accepted. No performance needed. You're accepted and loved right now. Come on, lift your voice now.
will sing the song of the redeemed. Faithful, faithful, faithful. You are faithful. Go deeper, wading deeper into the middle of the river. Wading deeper. Don't be content with ankle deep or knee deep or even waist deep. Wherever you're at, go in deeper. Wade in deeper. Wade in deeper. You are, you are. our hands say with me Holy Spirit I honor your presence I honor your presence in this place I honor your presence in my life I honor your presence this morning and I thank you for your anointing upon my mind and my heart to receive the full revelation of your word which will bring me faith freedom and hope in Jesus name and all God's people said amen and amen first time newcomers please stand or stay standing the rest of us sit down let's give them a big God bless you welcome it's great to have you with us once uh, you may be seated um, maybe one of the deacons can just bring a newcomer package. And um, in your newcomer package um, that one of the deacons are rushing over to you with right now, <laughs> right over here. Oh, you got one? Wonderful. In there you'll find a newcomer card. Please fill it out with all your details so we can put you on our mailing list and let you know what all God is doing here at City Bible Church. How many of you know Ken Malone, or you've heard of Ken Malone? Ken, Ken is getting, uh, in fact, he's, he's excited to, uh, he's getting ready to be with us again in September. And so uh, let's also begin preparing for that. And of course, one of the things that's also very exciting to me, apart from our wonderful services and times that we have here, is our Labor Day uh, Fellowship. Amen. I want you to, even though it's a Monday, Let's get together, have some fun. How many of you know we get to know each other a, a little more and a little better than just walking in, praise and worship, listening to the word, having a, maybe a cup of coffee and walking out? Whereas 
we get to know each other a little better when we either playing or watching volleyball and watching us, the adults, wipe the youth out again. <laughs> and um, they told me that they won, they won the volleyball at the, the youth camp that they've just come back from. And so I thought to myself, how bad must those other teams be? No, I'm only kidding. And so uh, we're excited to play them again uh, on Labor Day. And they're also wanting to challenge us to soccer. So please, people, we, uh, let's get together and let's get ready to, to do what we do best. Amen. Apart from fellowship and love one another and grow in the Lord. Amen. We have some announcements, which I know they're getting ready to put up for you. Um, how many of you are ready for a God encounter this morning? I'll tell you what. You get, look for seat belts. Hopefully you have some. And settle in because we're going to have a great time this morning. God bless you. Hi, CBC family. We are reaching people with the good news of the gospel. And we at City Bible Church continue to run with the vision that God has given us for the city and the nation. It's time for this week's announcements. We'd like to take a moment to welcome our first-time visitors today. We hope you've enjoyed the warm family atmosphere here at City Bible Church. Please pick up your free welcome package at our information desk after the service. Fill out the visitor's card in your package and turn it into one of our deacons in the foyer so we can keep you updated with all the exciting things going on here at City Bible Church. And if you're watching online today, we would love to connect with you too. Please visit our website at citybiblechurch.com and click the Contact Us link to send us your email and any information you would like about City Bible Church. Here are our upcoming events. Come out for the third week of Submerge this Wednesday as we continue to receive new and exciting insight going deeper on some of the topics discussed in these sessions. Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. See you there. Impact Youth this Friday night is another outreach night. Now that you are back from camp and fired up, you will be taking the love of Jesus to the streets with an evangelism treasure hunt. All will be meeting up at the church at 7 p.m. and doing a quick training session before going out in teams to evangelize the city of Jacksonville. Come ready to shine your light. See you Friday at 7 p.m. It's been said that prayer may just be the most powerful tool that mankind has. Prayer is an integral part of what makes up City Bible Church. Since we opened our doors in the 1990s, we have been having noon prayer meetings where we seek God as a church with one heart and one purpose. Come and join us in this powerful time of prayer every Monday through Thursday from noon to one. Life groups are a great way to get to know our church family better and to hang out with people who have a heart for God. Remember to check out all the exciting things our life groups have to offer. You can download our detailed life groups list from our website and check out what is happening every month at citybiblechurch.com. When Christ is the center of your focus, then everything comes into perspective. Fix your eyes on Jesus and He will lead you, direct you and reveal to you all that you need for this life. That wraps up our announcements for this week. Let's continue to make a difference as we are touching lives with the good news of Jesus Christ. City Bible Church, to know God and to make Him known. Hallelujah. Well, if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. You're going to be glad you came this morning. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm ready for God to turn me into an eagle Christian. You see, folks, there's two kinds of Christians. There's eagle Christians, those who saw in the heavenlies, those who are seated with Christ in heavenly places, who see and have perspective. Those are people of vision. The, those are people who operate in the realm and dimension of the Spirit. And then there's chicken Christians. There's eagle Christians and there's chicken Christians. Chicken Christians only see what's in front of them. They are quick to criticize and they are quick to find fault in the other chickens 
and especially in the eagles that are soaring above them. They are moaning, complaining, fault-finding, and they're even like friends. They don't like to be alone, and so they gather in little groups and have the eagles, uh, uh, figuratively speaking, they have the eagles for dinner. They sit talking and criticizing and fault-finding, and in the church, we need to all rise up to become eagles in the spirit. We need to grow up from chicken to eagle. And whether we were raised as a chicken, God, when we're born again, the born again nature is the nature of an eagle. He wants us to rise up above the circumstances, above that critical spirit, above that fault finding thing, and begin to soar over life and circumstances and, and, and to begin to live like eagles. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, eagles in general, you don't get 50 eagles flying around together. Eagles generally are more hanging out with their families and they're kind of loners. You, you don't find, it's not like chickens where pop, 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 and they, or they, it can be 50 chickens in, a, in, 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 in like a, a 10 square feet, you know, kind of thing. Uh, you'll find eagles, by and large, they, they, they are there to operate and live like an eagle. And God has called us to be eagles. And in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3, it says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This is what eagles do. Eagles are voices calling in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. You know, eagles are builders. Eagles are those who make a way. Eagles are those who join the dots, who, who, who stand in the gap. Instead of criticizing and talking about the gap, they stand in the gap. Amen? Eagles are those who recognize and, 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 and are those who make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And so the, you and I have a daily choice. Am I going to live like a chicken or am I going to live like an eagle? It's easy to be a chicken. It's easy to join in. It's easy to join in the song of, of what's wrong, why the body isn't doing this and why the church isn't doing that and why the pastor this and why the leaders this. And it's very easy to join in that. It's, it's very simple to be in a negative critical atmosphere and to be and to be overcome by that negative critical spirit because that's what it is it's a spirit it's a spirit uh, 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 God has not given us a spirit of fear but a spirit of love power and a sound mind I sh you and I should be operating in a spirit of love power and a sound mind and God is calling us to rise up that's the that's the spirit of an eagle it's a spirit of love power and a sound mind. It has a clear mind. It has clear understanding as far as what it should be doing and where it should be going. Amen? And so here it goes on. It says, verse 4, Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. Watch this now. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Say with me, the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all the people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God is revealing His glory, and He says all the people will see it, because God has spoken it. God's will is for us to be exposed to and enjoy and embrace the glory of God. Amen? Now, in the same uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 40, go with me to verse 29. And of course, when the glory of the Lord is revealed, what, it, what happens? He gives strength to the weary. There's so many people that are weary today. We're weary because of the economy. We're weary because of what the government's doing or not doing. Uh, we're weary because 
of what's going on overseas and, 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 and what's happened in the property market and what's happened to our 401ks, 601ts, and all these different things that, 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 that's gone on. We, we, weary, we weary in all the different wars and the difficulties and the struggles and the trials and, and all the different things that's come against us, our families, our homes, our children, those of us who have kids. We can get weary, but here it says he gives strength. How many of you have gotten to that place sometimes, at least once this year, where you said, I cannot do this anymore? Okay, wonderful. Only a thousand uh, uh, honest people in the house. Thank you, Jesus. So he, here it says he gives strength to the weary. God gives strength to the weary. Watch this. And increases the power of the weak. So those who have felt weak and tired, he increases the power, his power, his power in you. Be strong in the, and in his mighty power. Ephesians uh, 6 verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God is calling us to increase ourselves in strength. Why? Because it's going to take some strength to be that eagle Christian. God is calling us to rise up now. When, now watch this, watch this next verse, and it says, even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. Even youths. This is not an age thing, this is a spiritual thing. Keep going, watch this next verse now. They said, no, the next verse is in verse um, uh, 31. But those, Isaiah 40 and verse 31, it says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Those who trust in the Lord will renew. Say renew. renew. God is in the business of renewing. He's a renewing God. You know what I love about the word renew? It means it used to be new, it grew old, and now it needs to be new again. It used to be new and strong, now it grew old and weak. Whether that's because of age or that's because of weariness. How many of you know, that, again, we proved it that it's got nothing to do with age. It's not age related, it's situation related. Amen? Because sometimes stuff can just drain you and suck the life out of you. Amen? And it says, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. Watch this. I, I like the King James it says, they will mount up on wings like eagles. They will mount up. On wings like eagles. They will soar on wings like eagles. When you soar, there's an ascension. There's an ascending. There's a going higher. There's a going forward. That God is calling us to rise up. From being on the floor like a chicken and clucking around and, and talking about how filthy the chicken coop is. God is saying, uh, it's filthy because you were never called to be in the chicken coop. You were called to soar. So you need to mount up, you need to soar, you need to, you need to, you need to open your wings. And we're going to talk about the wings uh, possibly a little bit today and then we'll touch on it and we'll carry on tonight. I got, I'm going to talk about the seven habits of eagles. It will blow you away, including how they choose their mate. How many of you ladies want to know how to choose your mate? Come tonight, you will learn. Amen. It, I tell you what, it's a foolproof thing. I read, I went, man, that's good. And if all the ladies knew this, you would, you would, choose, you would choose the right mate. Amen? And so, it, and so it says, they'll mount up on wings like eagles. Right? They'll mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. God is looking for us as His people to become eagles. Turn to the person next to you and say, Today, I am an eagle Christian. I am an eagle. No more a chicken. No more chicken Christianity for me. No more chicken soup for me. I'm an eagle. I live like an eagle. I think like an eagle. I soar like an eagle. And of course, for you and I to soar, we need to open up our wings. You don't soar with no wings. And the wings, I believe, 
are two things. Number one, it's the, the one wing is the wing of faith. Say it with me, faith. And uh, we need a wing that has to do with faith. And faith has to do with the word. Because faith comes by? And hearing by the? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I need to open my right wing of faith. That which trusts in the word. The left wing is the wing of the spirit. Word, spirit. Word, spirit. Say with me, word, word. Spirit. spirit. God's end time people are going to be a people of the word and a people of the spirit. And so the way I'm going to mount up on wings like eagles is I'm going to open this wing of faith, trusting in God, because those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. I'm opening the wing of the word or of faith, believing the word. My second wing I open is those who live by the Spirit. Uh, uh, Galatians chapter 5, I think it's verse um, uh, 13, 14, or 15. Those who live by the Spirit, possibly 16, 17, uh, it's somewhere there. <laughs> those who live by the Spirit, amen, will not fulfill the, the lust of the flesh. Those who, uh, those who live by the Spirit, are sons of God. Those who walk in the Spirit are sons of God. Say with me, I walk in the Spirit, so I'm the Son of God. The Bible says in John 1, 12, to as many that are called by His name, to them He gave the right or the power to be called the sons of God. So I need to put out my wing of faith in the Word, my, my wing of the Spirit, and be led by the Spirit, and also live by the Word, and that's, and then, watch this, then the current of the Holy Spirit sweeps under us. Now notice this, that if you don't have your wings out, that, that current, that wind can blow as much as it wants. You'll just go, and get all the goosebumps, because the anointing's present, and and we can laugh, and shake, and rattle, and roll, and swing on chandeliers, but I tell you what, we will never soar until we open these wings. Amen. 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 It's time for God's people to open the wings, and I believe that this is a prophetic word for us individually, and for us as a church, because it's time for us as a church to mount up on those wings and to begin to rise and to begin to, to soar. Many years ago when we first started the church, we were interviewing, on, we, we, we were for two, almost three years, we, uh, we hosted the local TBN station uh, many times. Uh, we were on sometimes every three weeks. Joyce, you remember that? I think, uh, was it you that came through that program? I know there's a few people that came to us through that program. And um, a lady showed up that I'd never seen before. And I was told that she was a protege uh, of Benny Hinn. In the sense that she studied under him. She was mentored by him. She was powerfully anointed. And, um, and of course, those of you that know me, I, uh, I, was, uh, I was quick to say, do you have an opening? And we grabbed her. And also let her minister in the church here. Powerfully anointed woman of God. And I, I, I just met her. Like I said, we, we, we just interviewed her. And uh, I'm not sure if it's before or after. I'm open to correction. But I think it was before we even interviewed her. I remember her getting up out of the couch. Actually, it was before. And she came and knelt in front of us. And she said, thus says the Lord. You are in a place of obscurity, but a day is coming, says the Lord, when I will bring you out, and I will cause you to rise up, and many will see you, and I will cause many to be drawn to you, and, 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 and bring you to the place that, which I have purposed, declares the Lord. I am, and, and I will bring you out of that place of obscurity. And I truly believe that since then, uh, that word in many ways uh, continued to resonate in, in, in our spirits, in my spirit. And, um, and uh, it, it, it's amazing that we went from being on Beach Boulevard. And I want to talk about the different phases of where we've been. We started the church uh, in many ways like a little baby eagle Christian. A little baby that gets born and the mommy 
eagle just uh, puts worms and food in its mouth and it's just cheap, cheap, cheap and it's being fed. And then let me explain to you how it works because the nest is made up of four layers. Uh, those of you who are taking notes, you're going to be very interested in this. That um, the, uh, In fact, of seven layers, I beg your pardon. First layer is a layer of twigs. Second layer is a layer of thorns. Third layer is a layer of rags. Fourth layer is a layer of dry leaves. This is a fact now of how they build their nests. Fifth layer is a layer of twigs again. Uh, sixth layer is a layer of thorns. And then the seventh layer is a layer of cotton. You know, something cushy for the, for the babies. And so what happens is as the babies grow and they are getting stronger, mommy and daddy eagle decide it's time for the babies to do what we do. And so what they do is they remove the cotton out of the, out of the nest. And those thorns are prickly. And those thorns are saying, this is not nice anymore. What is the matter with you? Don't you love us anymore? Don't you care for us? And they're feeling a little prickly. And it's sore every time I move because mommy and daddy eagle wants them out of the nest. So you know what? The day comes where this is just way too uncomfortable and they climb out of the nest, but they're still on the cliff and they're looking down. It's like, uh, I don't think so. And so Daddy Eagle uh, goes up and he's circling. Now, of course, it could be the other way around. So this is not a male-female thing. I'm just picking one of them. It goes and starts circling. And the and all the little baby eagles are looking and going, wow, I want to be just like daddy. Wow. And their wish begins to come true. Because mommy eagle goes next to them against the, uh, uh, the edge of the cliff and starts to nudge them. This is a fact now. This is how eagles live. Starts to nudge them towards the end of the precipice, the ledge where they nest and where they hang out. And little eagles are going, Mommy's joking. Mommy loves us way too much. You'd never do this. And Mommy's going, Yes, I would. <laughs> because you were not created to be a chicken, you were created to be an eagle. That is your destiny. Your destiny is not on the ground. We are not destined to be earthbound. We're destined to be heavenly creatures. We have been created in His likeness, in His image. And the Bible says He has raised us up into heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're not created to live on earth. We're created to live having the mind of Christ. Turn to the person next to you and say Oh man, I could go home already. But I'm not going home yet. You see, we've become... If our minds are earthly... If we're too earthly minded, we're going to live on an earthly realm. But if I'm heavenly minded, I will live in the heavenly realm. Chickens think, act, talk... Live like a chicken. Eagles talk, live, soar like an eagle. And so little baby eagle is getting nudged and he's getting nudged and saying, Mommy, have you noticed what's on this side? Mom, are you wearing your glasses today? You're getting old. Can you see what's on this side? Are you kidding me? Mom, 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 mom. <laughs> and that little eaglet is plummeting to the ground and thinks to herself, Mommy hates me. I thought she loved me. Did you feed me to kill me? How many of us have felt like that sometimes? Did you save me to dump me here and just to, just to forget about me? 
And while it's falling, it looks up and goes, Daddy, you look so good, but I'm going to die. Why can't I do that? And all of a sudden, just before it hits the ground, Mommy Eagle comes and picks it up again. Oh, I knew my mommy loved me. Whoa, this is so good. How many of you ever felt like that? Just when you're about to hit the ground, Jesus comes and goes, Oh, I didn't die. I thought I was going to die in that whole thing. And then Mommy Eagle just soars with you on her back. It takes you higher than you were before. And then she goes, whew, left bank. And down you go, ah, this is the worst roller coaster ride in my life. And there you go down again. And on the way down, I wish I was like Daddy. Look how beautiful daddy looks. All oh, those beautiful wings. I'm going to die. Whew. Mommy comes again, picks baby up, and off we go again. We're climbing up heights. Oh, this is wonderful. You know what? I can do this all day, but it's still very scary. Mommy, why are you doing this to me? Watch daddy. Watch daddy. Do like daddy. Come on now. You can do this. And then takes that little eaglet way up again. And then banks her left again. And down she goes again. And then she, on her way down, she's looking and saying, I don't like this anymore. I'm, I'm getting bilious. This is not funny. I want to throw up. Why did you feed me if you want me to throw it up? And on the way down, oh, I wonder if I put my wings out like daddy, if I would, maybe that could work for me. Uh, let me try this. Let me, shall, uh, let me try. Okay, uh, this is all happening at lightning speed because we're plummeting down now, right? And all of a sudden, little eaglet goes, and somehow something's happening, and puts out it, its wings, and it's a little unstable, but man, okay. Okay, oh, this is, a, whew, mommy comes up again. You need a little more height. Proud of you. You can do this. Raises up that little eaglet even higher than before. Banks are right this time. I'm going to try this. Okay. Puts out its wings and all of a sudden like, woo! I can do this. The eagle Christian is born. Now that little eaglet was always an eagle. But only when it put out its wings and began to think and act and live and soar like an eagle. That's the only time it began to live the life of an eagle. Our churches are full of people. They are full of people who, when born again by the Spirit of God, are born again to become eagles. But they still... They have this perspective of this 10, 10 square yards, and they're complaining about all the dirt and the poop and the food and all the stuff that's around. This place stinks. I don't, know. I don't like this place. It's because you were never meant to be on the ground. You and I were meant to soar. Now, notice the place of soaring is not a physical place. It's not a physical church. It's a place in the spirit. You can belong to the best church, which is this one on the face of the planet, but unless you choose to soar, no matter which church you're in, you're going to be a, a chicken. You can even be a chicken. In, it'll be an uncomfortable experience to be a chicken in this church. And you're going to hate it. But un, unless you put your wings out and begin to soar, and begin to soar with the eagles that are soaring, that's when you're going to feel a part of things. Because you will never, you and I will never, ever 
fulfill our purpose and our destiny living like a chicken. We're called to soar like eagles. Amen? And I believe the time has come in the life of City Bible Church that not just individually, but as a church, we're being kicked out the nest. And so we've been looking and we're busy looking for church premises. And I have a sense that the church premises is part of us coming out of obscurity, which was the prophetic word that that woman of God who came and preached for us, by the way, a couple of times, and she was, I'm not kidding, it was like a female Benny Hinn in the church. How many of you were there that time? Joyce, you remember, she was powerfully anointed, wasn't she? Sorry? She was there a week? Yeah, she was with us for a whole week. Tell you what, you want to see miracles and healings? Whoo, powerful. And she brought prophetic words. She was a powerfully anointed woman. So having said that, I believe that we, God is busy getting us where it's like, okay, this is thorns, man. How many of you know, even though it's an insecure time, and I'm going to identify some things so that you don't get scared when you feel certain things. And just because it's prickly and, 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 and you've got people next to you that are bumping you and, and hitting you into the thorns and you're going, what's wrong with you? You just bumped me into the, into the thorn here. It doesn't mean that we, things are bad. It just means things are moving. God is moving us to our next level. God is moving us as a church. And we move from... Uh, 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 we move from establishing and pioneering this church. How many of you know to pioneer a church is one thing, to take over a church is another? Pastors, including people like us, get offered churches regularly. Some of them are large churches, three, five, six, seven hundred. We were offered a church of seven, eight hundred people just a few years ago. We know people that no churches that are looking for pastors. How many of you know you, you don't run after numbers, you run after what God is calling you to be and to do? Amen? Amen? You've got to be faithful. You cannot go after numbers. You cannot go after the glitz and glamour and, and something that's established. You've got to go after what God is telling you to do and to be. Whether it's a job, whether it's a ministry, whether it's a calling, well, no matter what it is, you, you and I need to be faithful to that which God has called us to. Amen? And so, if, uh, imagine if I had done that, you wouldn't be sitting here today. You wouldn't be hearing this awesome message on you being, you and I rising up to be the eagle Christians we were meant to be. Amen? And so, you need, it says, they will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not faint. You and I, when we rise up to be those eagle Christians, we will, have, we will be sustained by the supernatural power of God. His strength will become our strength. We will operate on a, 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 in a spiritual realm and dimension as opposed to an earthly realm and dimension. Amen? Now, I have so much to say. Uh, and so little time to say it in. Go, but go with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. And while you're doing that, I want to share with you that one of the things that we are trusting and believing God for is that wherever we move, it's going to be something that will be visible. When we were on Beach Boulevard, we exploded with growth because we had people. In fact, our very bookkeeper was driving down the road. Diane was driving down the road, and the Lord says to her, this is, you must hear her tell us, tell the story. It's actually, it's, it's amazing. In fact, uh, Wayne and uh, Sabrina, you, you guys too, they were just driving down the road, and the Lord says to her, look right. She hears this voice, say, look right. She looks right, and the Lord says, that's a church I want you to go to. Now, th- actually, this is what happened. The Lord says, I want you to go and give that church $200. And she goes, the next day she drives past, I said, go and give those people $200. She, wasn't, she hadn't even put her foot in our church yet. Now, we were praying 
because we wanted to have a little children's church section with all the little, you know, the, the slides and all their stuff in the back there. And we were trusting the Lord for, I think it was $1,500. And we were short $200. So she's driving past, and the Lord said, I said, go and give them $200. Okay. She turns in, and she goes, and one of our associate pastors stepped outside. We were busy working in there. And she says, is this a, is this a church? He says, yes. She says, God told me to give, bring you $200 because you need it. He went, He said, okay, and thank you. Well, we're actually busy wanting to build our children's, minister, uh, our children's little section over there. He took the money. A week later, she's driving past. He says, he says to her, look right. She looks right says, I want you to go to that church. Yes, Lord. She's been with us ever since. Hallelujah. Amen. This is how God works. And so what happened was exactly what that prophetic word was. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep you in a place of obscurity and then I'm going to bring you out into the open. And I truly believe that this is a time where God is bringing us into the open. And, it, and I, I want to say, the chickens are going to moan and complain. How many of you know not everybody's going to love wherever we move? And as your pastor, I'm going to do my best to take you to the best place I know. The best place we can get for that amount of money, you, we will get our money's worth. I promise you. You know me. I know how to bargain. It's in my blood, man. My people know how to bargain. We created bargaining. The first closed mall in the world was in Turkey. Hello. My people know how to sell and bargain and First mall. Come on, ladies. We know how to do a mall. So I know how to bargain. In fact, if you don't bargain with my people, they are insulted. You go to Turkey and you just pay top dollar for that leather jacket, the guy throw you out of his shop. How much you want for this? $200. Here you are. Get out my shop. What do you mean you're going to give me $200? Well, you said $200. No, you must talk. We must... We they want to bargain with you. In fact, they'll sit you down, make you a cup of coffee, and they want you to bargain. They want to feel that they sold you the jacket. They don't want top dollar. Never, never, never pay top dollar, especially to a Turk, except me. <laughs> Amen. All that was a joke and for free. Right, Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 9. For the Lord's portion is His people. Oh, there's so much I want to share with you this morning. Let's keep going. For the Lord's portion is His people. Jacob, His allotted inheritance. In the desert land He found Him. In a barren and, how and howling waste, He shielded Him and cared for Him. He guarded Him as the apple of His eye. Say with me, I am the apple of God's eye. It says, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them aloft. Our big daddy eagle is going, this is how you're going to do it. And he is leading us in this adventure. I'm going to say it again. He is leading us in this adventure. And just like you've trusted us as a leadership to lead you in this time, we need that trust because we need you to move into the next place, to move into the next phase. We need your faithfulness, your commitment, your shoulder to stay and to even be put into the plow that much harder and better so that we can move to our next level to fulfill our destiny. Amen. The Lord gave me the next phase of the vision of where we're at right now. One of the things we need to do is to build the core of this church. We have a, let me tell you, we have, if you look ratio-wise, we have more leaders 
If you look, let's say we, for the sake of discussion, let's say we have 200 adults that this is their church. We have our percentage of people that are involved and in any kind of leadership is higher than the average church across the country. There's a church not far away from here that's got thousands, a few thousand people. They don't have as many leaders as we do. He dreams about having our leaders. He doesn't, he's struggling to build a leadership, which tells me we have a strong core, which tells me we have committed people, which tells me we have people that are founded and established. They're not perfect people. In fact, if anybody's perfect, please come and preach the rest of this message because I also need to sit down. Amen? But they committed and they love God. That's one of the reasons why we put the elders on pause, put the deacons on pause, functional as much as they can, but waiting on the Lord to get those two things that I asked everybody to get in this church. Number one, God's heart for his city, and God's heart for his people. Now, not to say they didn't have it, but that's something that God began in me. You'll remember, if you don't know what that means, y'all remember (laughs) that I came to you at the end of May and I said, folks, the Bible says, take heed to yourselves and then to the flock of God. I'm going to take this summer I thought it was just going to be a month. And just wait on the Lord for me to be refreshed, for me to, to be renewed. I thought, it, I thought it, it was just me. So I took a month because I knew I needed time alone with God. I was still functional as a pastor. I was still counseling, still loving people. I was preaching a little less, which is great because we've got wonderful ministry that goes on here on Wednesdays. And some Sunday nights, the Lord just, we've got amazing people that can preach and minister to help, to assist. We had a few guest speakers in in between. And so, God began to do a work in me. And once, because I I went to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I need to know what's the next phase. Where are we going? Those of you that know me, I'm not a mundane, I can just plod. I'm not a plodder. You're looking for a church that's a plodding church? This is not it. You want a church that's an advancing church and that's always looking to take new ground, new territory, and more souls to grow, and not just to w- notice, not just to grow in numbers, but to grow in disciples. You know, they teach you in Bible school how to grow numbers. Anybody can grow numbers. It's to grow disciples. That's a whole different thing. He says, go and make disciples of all nations. He didn't say go and make uh, converts. He says, go and make disciples. Two different things. A convert and a disciple is not the same thing. So, as I was saying, God is bringing us to a place, and I believe the next phase is for us to grow the core The core of people that are strong and established, people that are shoulder to the plow, I'm committed in my giving, I'm committed in my serving, I'm committed because God has called me here, I am planted here, just because... Just because a thorn may stick my side here and there, and just because somebody rubs me up the wrong way, I'm not just going to up and leave. Because that's called immature Christianity. I only... I only go when God tells me to. I only move when God tells me to. And if that cloud doesn't move, I'm not going anywhere. If the glory of God is here, I want to be here. And I want to say to all of you, the day the glory walks out, you'll see me walking behind it. Because I don't want to be a one second longer than when the glory is gone. When God's presence lifts... And by God's grace, it will never lift. I'm out of here too. 
Because I don't want to be anywhere where God's presence and God's glory isn't. Amen? And so we're going to grow in commitment. We're going to grow even numerically. And we're going to grow in maturity. And that's why we've been talking about loving people. When new people come in, let them feel loved. Let them feel, let them feel special. Let them feel accepted. Let them feel like, wow, there are people that truly love God and that love people. And that's what I called the church to. The second thing I called the church to do is get God's love for our city. Because you cannot minister to someone you don't love. You cannot. You cannot be effective to minister to someone you don't love. Irrespective of their background, color, creed, race, or whatever. You cannot. There is no such thing as me being a great preacher, a great minister, and I don't love you. If, you, if, if we don't love people, how many of you know people can see fake? We fool ourselves that people don't see fake. They see it. Good news and bad news. People see it. And we are called to live in love. Whether we're in leadership or whether we're not, we're called to love God's people. And if we don't love them, we cannot minister to them. That's why I said, after a month, end of June, I came to all of you and I said, guys, because by the way, I got to the end of June, I thought, I'm loving this. I want more. I want more of what you're doing in me, Lord. Then the Lord said to me, now take the leadership and the church and take them with you to get my heart for the city, to get my heart for the church, to get my love for the city, to get my love for the church. Anyone who's close to Jesus will love his bride as much as he loves his bride. Amen. How many of you know? <laughs> has anybody stumbled, fallen, made a mistake, sinned r at least once this year? That's what I love about this church, man. I tell you, you are the most honest people. I, that's why I hang out with you all. <laughs> Hands just fly up, man. How many of you did Jesus kick you in the teeth and shoot? <laughs> are you kidding? I'll counsel you all later. But when you fell, when you were down, when you're feeling broken, when you're feeling worthless and guilty did he come and kick you and shoot you no god is a god of restoration say with me god is a god of restoration when we fall or we stumble or we make a mistake his goal is always restoration that's why the bible says if you find someone in sin Kick them in the teeth, criticize them and expose them and tell them how pathetic they are. Is that what it says? It says, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, lest you also be tempted. I've told the story many times, I'm not going to get into it, but in Bible school, I criticized somebody. In fact, he was one of my lecturers. I stood up, I thought I was cool. I was a student president. I could do whatever I wanted to. And I stood up and I put my finger in his face and I told him that he wasn't worth being in the ministry. Thought I was cool. The following year, I was going through, there's only one way to put it, a living hell. And I'm crying out to God in my office. I was an investment broker. I'm saying, God, why is this happening to me? I love you. I serve you. I'm giving my life to you. And that brother's face comes in front of me. And the Lord said, you've touched mine anointed. You've judged him. And now you've come under the same judgment. The same thing I criticized him for was happening to me. Are we talking... 25, 27 years ago stories now. Still, the point is still that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
I wept and I repented. I said, God, I'm so sorry. I touched one of your choice servants, and he was. He, had the, he was one of the most beautiful Christians you'll ever meet. I picked up the phone. I said to him, Brother, it's Errol. And the phone went quiet, because I, I know he found out, he knew what I'd said about him. He knew how I'd downed him to pastors, to leaders. I thought I was being spiritual. Those days I was a hellfire damnation preacher. The more I made you feel like the flames of hell were licking at your legs while I'm preaching, the better preacher I thought I was. Those were the days, man. Those were days. That's the, that's the way it was those days. And I'm weeping and I'm repenting to him. And he said to me, I forgive you. However, this was the part that hurt. He said, it's like going to the top of Colton Center. Colton Center was a 50-story building in Johannesburg. 5-0, 50 stories. I loved going up there because it had, on the top floor, it had like a little restaurant. It had those telescope things where you could overlook the whole city. And he said, it's like going to the top of Colton Center and taking a feather pillow and doing this. And all the feathers go flying. He says, no matter what you do, you'll never be able to get all those feathers back. Right. When he said that, it was like he grabbed me like this and he went, gsh, gsh, gsh. and I was like, and I said, Let's say his name was John. I said, John, I want you to know, I will not rest day or night until I pick up every feather that I did to you. It took me seven years, seven years, to undo what took me a year and a half to do. I had to travel 400, 500 miles at times on my Kawasaki Ninja at 200 kilometers an hour. Sorry, I shouldn't have told you that part. But I would travel, I would lay on that bike and I would go. And all I wanted to do was clear my brother's name. All I wanted to do was make right what I did wrong. How many of you understand what I'm saying how many of you have been spoken ill of misjudged betrayed and you would have loved someone to go out of their way to correct what you did a few years later we were invited to be and God just did a, an amazing thing pulled us out of the we were part of the assemblies of God group and brought us into a, the second largest non-denominational church in the country. It was thousands of people. At the time, maybe two, three thousand people. And the Lord brought us into that place and gave us the opportunity to be youth pastors of this church. When we joined, when we joined at the time, there was maybe 20, 25 youth. Church exploded in revival one of the reasons were what was going on in the youth. We had people like R.W. Shambach say, I've never seen a youth on fire. We, had, we took a whole block of 800 seats and it was all youth, young people. And God blessed us at the time. And there was something I was heading towards. Oh, yes. I'm in prayer one day, and the Lord says to me, call that brother that I criticized and get him to come minister here. How many of you know true forgiveness is seen at that time? I picked up the phone. I said to him, John. His name wasn't John, but I'm using that name now. I said, John, will you come and preach for us? It went quiet on the other side. 
And he said, sure, I will. He came and he ministered. Power of God fell. Powerfully anointed man of God. We held each other and with tears in my eyes, I said, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for coming. It was proof of your forgiveness for what I've done, what I'd done to you. Folks, it's not time to shoot the wounded. It's not time to shoot the weak and the weary and those that are going through difficult times. It's not time to act like a chicken when people are trying to put their wings out and soar. And to say, well, if, if, they would, if they did it this way, they'd do better. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Put out your own wings of faith and spirit and begin to soar and begin to live and begin to do what God has called you to do instead of looking to everybody else. It's time to grow up. It's time for us to rise up, to mount up on those wings. Notice, to mount up means you were mounted down. If the word mounted, you, were, you, were, you can't mount down. It's kind of an oxymoron, isn't it? Um, you've got to be down if you've got to mount up. And it's time for us to rise up now. To rise up out of childishness. Rise up out of that place of, 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 of guilt and condemnation and criti being critical. And, and You know what? Like I said, if, if the people you're hanging around with are determined to stay chickens, then you need to choose your friends a little better. Amen. Choose your friends a little better. Choose to be with eagles, not with chickens. Choose to be with people that are going to be solution-orientated, not problem-orientated. Choose to be with people that they may not be soaring, but they want to soar at the very least. They want a soul. They want to live for God. And they're willing to learn and to grow, to mount up on wings as eagles. Wow, so much, uh, uh, so much to say. Let's, let's start closing off here. The Bible says, how many of you know that the pastor's sharing his heart? He's sharing vision. I'm sharing apostolically. I'm bringing correction where necessary. This is the, this is the calling of, of the apostolic. And how many of you know if the cap fits, wear it? Amen. And if it's time to grow up, let's grow up. If it's time to change, let's change. If, if it's time to, 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 to mount up on those wings, let's mount up on those wings. If it's time to be a mature adult Christian, let's do that. If it's time to get strengthened because we're weary or we're tired, let's do that. Amen? The stages of growth in an eagle's life, an eaglet, an adolescent, a young adult, and then an adult. Of course, in the eaglet stage, we're fed. Everything's perfect. Everything's nice around us. Have you noticed after a while as, as you grow in the Lord, have you noticed that all of a sudden your prayers aren't getting answered like they used to? When you first get born again, every prayer you pray is almost answered. It's like, whoa, I love this Christianity thing. Man, you've got to try this. And all of a sudden, have you noticed all of a sudden uh, it's not happening as much? That's because he's moving us into maturity. Not just is he after taking care of our comforts, he's after our character. God's interested in your character more than he is in your comfort. Amen? And so, I'm moving towards a close here. And then of course, uh, uh, when we're adolescent, we also there's a lot of hurts. There's a lot of abuse and wounds. And this is a time where either it maims us and hurts us for life, or it makes us stronger. And you'll find that it, as it moves into uh, a young adult and even towards a more mature adult, a wise, mature eagle pulls out its own feathers. I want to just quickly talk about this. Some of you have got some old feathers that ain't working for you. 
It's called an old wineskin. Time to get rid of the old wineskin because God is wanting to pour new wine into new wineskins. Pull out your own feathers and lay in the sun like I've done, like I'm doing. And let the Lord renew because as you lay in that sun, the Bible says Malachi 4 and I think it's verse 2. The sun of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. The rays of, of the glory of God will just permeate and bring healing and new feathers will grow. And those new feathers will help you to rise higher than you ever did before. Now don't miss tonight's service because we go deeper tonight into this eagle Christian. You're going to be able to uh, withstand the storms of life. You're going to understand how to withstand the sto storms of life. You really don't want to miss tonight's service. And you're also going to know how to pick your mate, ladies and men. You're going to know how to pick your mate according to the eagle. Amen? Now, um, yeah, uh, that's Malachi 4 verse 2. Now, number th the third area of growth is growth and strengthening. And you'll find that when people move into young adult, it's time to make babies. And I believe we're in that stage of moving into a place where we're strengthening the core and it's baby making time. Now, please, not physically, okay? Unless it's your time. <laughs> or your season. We're talking about spiritual babies. Bringing in the spiritual babies and caring for them. Nurturing the spiritual babies. Loving on them. Helping being part of their raising and, their, and, and bringing them to a place where you're at. Where they also are putting out their wings of the Word. Faith in the Word and living by the Spirit. That's young adult. And of course, as we move, watch this now. The next stage from there is a stage of adulthood. Adults are, become mentors. Adults are like the Apostle Paul. Follow me even as I follow Christ. Adults are mentors. Adults are those that the little eaglets are going to go, Oh man, one day I want to be just like that. Do we have any adult eagles in the house? Do we have any adult eagles that even though times are tough, even though there's storms, even though there's difficulties, we're still flying with our wings of faith in the Word and living by the Spirit. We still live a balanced life. We can still look down and say, follow me even as I follow Christ. Where are we when it comes to being an eagle Christian? Psalm 103 and verse 5, and that's the last scripture we're going to look at today. The Lord is the one who satisfies your desires with good things. Now with me, He satisfies my desires with good things. So that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Now once again, youth, and I've said this to the young people many times, Youth is not age. Youth is not age. Youth is how you, how you feel. I know some young people that are like old people, not in this church. It's an old dude in a young body. Anyone met someone like that? They call it an old soul. They're just an old guy. Man, the dude's Age before his time. He's 20 years old. The ex like he's 70. It's like, hey man, let's go do this. Oh man, I'm tired. I got to go home and sleep. You're always sleeping. What's wrong with you? I'm tired, man. What did you do? Well, I, I just woke up. <laughs> They're tired because they woke up. <laughs> and so... Being renewed like a youth is not an age thing. It's a mindset thing. It's a mindset thing. And so it says, it's the Lord who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Watch this now. An eagle's strength is that which causes it to be an eagle. If you're a chicken, you need to question 
is, has your youth been renewed? And if not, those who wait upon the Lord, those who trust in the Lord, that's what I've been doing. I've been waiting on Him. Last week, I had so many people say, Pastor, that was the message of the year. Last, last Sunday. Sorry, youth, that were gone. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to turn out like it. It just did. I had so many people say, this was the best message I've heard you preach in years. And I was so blessed to hear that our multimedia team couldn't record it because it was, something wasn't working back there. So we, you recorded it? Please give it to us. People, people were ready to pay money and buy CDs that were here. It was that kind of message. What's happening? The pastor's youth is being renewed like the eagles. He's mounting on wings like eagles. He's getting stronger. Because at the end of June, I just felt, oh God, I'm having such a good time. I need more. And he said, yes, you do. So I said, okay, Lord, another month. He says, we'll see. Because it could be even longer. I'll take as long as I need to. All I know is I'm having a good time. And the church is growing. And people are being blessed. The word has been richer. Presence of God has gotten stronger. The gifts are operating that much, that much more intense. Last Sunday night was powerful. What's happening? You wait on the Lord, He will renew your strength. You'll mount up on wings like eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. Are you an eagle Christian today? I'm calling this church from myself to the elders, to the deacons, to those in hospitality, to those in any form of leadership, to those who operate the family life groups and the, and the different life groups. I'm calling everybody in this body, in this church, to mount up on wings. It's time now. It's time for this church because our big daddy eagle, which is the Holy Spirit, is going, initially, a couple of months ago, I was going, no, I'm, I like it here. It's nice. It, you know, and this was my biggest complaint. Do you know, Lord, how long it took us to lay these cables that's on the other side of these tiles? To put up these lights and all this equipment and to build all this? Are you kidding me? Now we've got to go and start again? How many of you feel kind of think the same way? I don't, it's work. And God is going, I have something greater for you. You can stay in this or you can go and soar. I looked and went, okay, Lord, it's painful, it's uncomfortable, but it's soaring time. Yeah. It's time to soar. It's time to soar. And I trust, I know there's many of you watching online that are in this church, some of you are out of town, some of you, whatever's going on, wherever you're at. And those of you that are here, I trust that every single person is going to soar with us to the next level. God wouldn't, God's not confused, church. God doesn't plant you in a church that when that church moves or whatever, it's time to change church. God's not confused. We get confused. God doesn't get confused. When God plants you in his house. The Bible says those that are pl planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's time to flourish. It's time to flourish. And some of you, whether it's your first time, second time, third time, fifth time, hundredth time, gazillionth time, whether you've been with us for 14, 15 years, which is when we started this church, some of you are here. Some of you are watching online. God knew what he was doing when he planted you. And it's time to flourish. It's time to move on and begin to soar once again. If we need to pull some feathers out because we've had some wounds, whether the wounds are in church or out the church, 
Time to pull those feathers out and lay out in the sun. Let the sun of righteousness heal us. Let's just bow our heads before the Lord as Daniel comes forward. I want to make the decision today that I'm going to soar. That I am going to mount up on wings. I don't want to live like a chicken anymore. And it's going to take some work because some of you, that's all, you've, that's all you know is to talk, 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 criticize, find fault. It's, it's, it's the way you were raised. I don't know if your mother was like it or your father. But some people are raised that way, so they think that's the norm. Not in the kingdom. In the kingdom, complainers, fault finders, critical people, criticizers, are all people that are chickens. And God is calling us to a higher level. Instead of seeing the fault, become part of the solution. Instead of seeing someone down and wanting to show how wonderful you are by exposing them, go down. Tend their wounds. Love them. That could be you tomorrow. That could be you tomorrow in that situation. It's easy to find fault when people are going through turmoil in their lives, in their relationships, in their workplaces or whatever. It's easy to find fault till you get there. And the same thing happens to you. We're not called to find fault. We're called to be part of the answer. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. John 3, 17. But that through Him we might be saved, delivered, healed. Since you and I are part of the body of Christ, remember it's one body. One head, one body. One head, one body, one person. If I'm connected to Jesus, if I'm doing opposite to Jesus, I'm a cancer in the body. Ouch. Yes. But if I'm aligned with the head, I'm a healthy living organism that works and operates under the unction of the Spirit of the living God. And if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in me, He will quicken my mortal body. Make that decision here today. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, or maybe you once knew Him but you backslid, and today you're saying, Pastor Errol, I want to give my life. Now this is the kind of Christianity I can believe in. I don't want this fake glitz and glamour and all this that looks like showmanship. I want the real thing like what you're talking about. I want to give my life or I want to rededicate my life to the Lord Jesus. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Just raise your hand. We'll say, God bless you. Is anybody here this morning? God bless you. I see that hand. Anybody else? That's wonderful. Somebody giving their life to Jesus. This is a precious, amazing moment. Anybody else? Pastor Errol, I want to give my life. Raise your hand up high. Don't be shy. If you, if you have not raised your hand yet, I want to give my life or I want to rededicate my life to the Lord Jesus. Raise your hand up high. Is anybody else this morning? Let's all pray this prayer out aloud, especially the gentleman that raised your hand. Mean it from your heart. Let's all pray it out aloud to encourage our brother. Father, this morning, I thank you for the truths of your word. I thank you today for loving me, accepting me, even with everything I've been through. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me in the blood of Jesus from all sin and all unrighteousness. Lord, I open the door of my heart and I invite you in to take your place on the throne of my life and to be my Lord 
and my Savior. I thank you today, according to your word, old things are passed away. My old life is behind me. My old life is behind me. My new life is before me. Everything's being made new. I embrace my new life and turn my back on my, my old life. Even today, even right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name. I wonder while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, we have somebody waiting at the back with a free gift for you. If I could ask our precious brother, if you could slip out the aisle. We just want to spend a few moments with you. You'll be with, back with us here in a couple of minutes. And um, God bless you. That's wonderful. Okay. How many of us would say, Pastor Errol, this message has inspired me personally and inspired me to be, the, uh, to be a functioning living organism in this house, in this church. This, I'm, I'm, I want to say, firstly, it's inspired me as a person individually. Let's, let's go there first. How many of you would, would say that's me? You've been inspired to be, rise up to a higher level, to be that eagle Christian. Wonderful. I see hands going up everywhere. Any, anybody? Else? Oh, that's everywhere. God bless you right at the back in front. God bless you on the side at the back there. Wonderful. I see these hands. How many of you would say, Pastor Errol, we're praying for you. We're praying for the leaders, the men, those that you're going to gather around you to help you make these decisions. And I'm, I invite everybody to be part of the giving us wisdom. If your wisdom isn't taken, please don't be offended. If you're going to be offended, then you, you don't need to be there because I need to take everybody's wisdom and then go before God and make a wise decision. Amen. And uh, I'm believing that everybody is going to be together. We're going to be one unit, one body, and we're going to move forward together. Amen. How many would say, Pastor Errol, I'm with you. We go, we go together. We're a body. We're moving. We're, it's time for us to put out our wings of faith in the Word and living by the Spirit as a church. It's time for us to come out of this place of obscurity and it's time for us to fulfill our destiny as a church. And I, we're going to grow the we're going to grow the core. We're going to grow and we're going to expand and we're going to love on our city, love on God's people. And we're going to have His love and His heart and express it to the church, express it to the body, express it to the people. This is how we're going to live. How many of you would say, Pastor Errol, I'm with you on this. His hands going up everywhere. That's wonderful. Let's all stand together. Say this. Say this with me. Say, Pastor Errol, I'm with you. Spirit, soul, and body. And Father, today, I put out my wings of faith in your word and living by the Spirit. I fix my eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. And Lord God, today, I thank you for the current of your and the wind of your spirit that is blowing. And today I mount up on wings as eagles. And I mount up to soar, to fly, to begin to be the eagle that you've called me to be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that individually I'm mounting on wings as eagles and that I'm in a body, that the entire body is mounting on wings as eagles. And together we will fulfill our destiny in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we honor you and worship you. I lift up my hands. I lift up my voice. And I praise you today. While we're doing this, I want deacons to stand ready. One of the things we do as we worship, part of our worship is our tithes and offerings. We're going to worship the Lord. I want you to give like an eagle. I want you to give. Let's get ready to give God 
this is going to take money. Hold on, Daniel. Just a little, hold on just a second. A little softer, please, everybody. Guys, a little softer. I want us to get ready to give. It's going to take money. I've got to pay first month's rent, last month's rent. I've got to, you know, it's going to, take, it's going to take some finances. I'm asking everybody that's saying, I'm with you. This is a time for us to be together, not just in word, but in deed. Because it's going to take, you know, the gospel is free. But the pipe to get that gospel to you is what you pay the JEA for. Amen. So I'm asking everybody, let's all put our shoulder to the plow. Let's give as much as we can. It's going to take thousands of dollars. And in this week, we need to secure a place. This week. And so we need that deposit this week. We have four places that we're looking at. It was three, it became four. <coughs> Just before I walked in here, somebody else told me of a place literally around the corner here. Which sounds like an also nice. I need, I'm going to go and see it. I'm open to anything. I'm wanting to get a place where you will be proud to bring your friends. Where you will be proud to bring your, your, your family. A place where you're, gonna, where you're not going to be ashamed in any way. I want you to believe God for favor with us because I have one or two places that's really nice. I have one or two places that's okay too nice. Amen. But as we negotiate, I'm going to invite those that, um, that especially that are our pillars in the church to come and to pray with me, to pray with us and to believe with us as we move forward as a church we're going to go and visit because i want to eliminate the places that it's not before i've called that's why i didn't call some of you because i don't want to waste your time some of you are involved in business and i don't want to waste anyone's time but i'm wanting to get let's say the the most obvious places and then invite those that that this is your church, this is where you give, this is where you sow, this is where you serve, this is your church, to come and be part of it and to, to join us. So I want, I want us all to, either way, we need, we need to move forward. This is our time. I want you to give as much as you can. I want you to sow as much as you can. This is our time to move forward as a church. Are you ready to sow, church? Are you ready to give like an eagle? We can give like a chicken. We can give like an eagle. If you're wanting to give with your Visa or MasterCard, we have people waiting for you at, through the double doors, first desk on your left-hand side. You can give right now. But let's worship. I want us to worship as we give. And we will, uh, and I'll close in prayer in five minutes. If you can give me another five minutes. I have five minutes according to the clock. So that's great. Let's just worship five minutes. Part of our worship is our giving. Let's give as we worship. Come on, Daniel, lead us now. Come on, let's lift our voice. Let's lift our voice. Let's give. Let's worship. Let it be a sweet smelling savor. A sweet smelling savor to the Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands and worship Him. Great is our God. your voice and worship him open up your wings and begin to worship him like you've never worshiped lift your hands open those wings and begin to soar as the currents of the holy spirit blows great is our God.
Let it come from the deepest part of your being. Worship Him. Give Him the honor. Great is our God. Great is our God. You are great. Great is our God. We sing is our God. Those of you online, if you're wanting to worship, you, you just press the donate button and it'll take you straight to a secure website where you can give. It's just take didn't call you you can come out and line up on this side where we're going to lay hands on you thank you Jesus there's something on your chest it's like a heaviness migraine somebody been suffering with severe migraine I want you to come out there's somebody that you've been having pains and cramps in your legs in your legs you've been having a lot of cramps and pains two things number one you need to eat more bananas you need potassium your body's lacking potassium number two come forward for prayer we'll lay hands on you but you do need to eat more bananas you have a potassium deficiency that's why you're having the cramps thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus
Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive your healing? I'm just going to dismiss those that would like to leave or that need to leave. Father, we thank you that as we part in God different ways, that your angels are encamped round about us, guarding us and keeping, keeping us, bringing us back safely as we continue in this wonderful, exciting adventure, as we soar like the mighty eagles, as we look to you, Father, the author and finisher of our faith, in Jesus' name. Tonight's service is not the same. I don't, I can never, I'm not the pastor that can preach the same message twice. It's a completely different message. So those of you that are new, I never preach the same message twice. It's a different message. However, it is about the eagle Christian. You need to come tonight. Don't miss tonight's message. Otherwise, uh, feel free to stretch out your hands. Believe God for their healing. Be part of this miracle of healing in these people's lives and bodies. In Jesus' name. The Bible.